Akiaba. I'm a photo-based artist here in New York, and today I'm going to be walking you through an image that I created as part of a challenge. So this was a challenge that I found on Instagram from a bunch of artists who mainly work in um, digital painting or drawing as mediums. Um, but as a photographer, I'm always interested in not only building community, but also um, really kind of expanding my skill set, both conceptually and technically as well. So I found this challenge to draw an image in one's own style. Now, because I'm a photo-based artist, I decided that it would be fun to use my photography and take an image and put it into my own style. And I shared this challenge with my Facebook group and I also shared some um, midway edits as well. So there were some questions as to how I achieved certain looks, so I figured it would be fun and helpful to share a walkthrough of this image. So this is the final piece, but we started with a very simple image shot in my studio. So there is a big window to the side of me here. I'm using my phone with the Canon Connect uh, app as a remote, and there are a, a couple of white V-flats on the side of me to bounce light up into the face. So very, very simple setup. The first thing that I did was that I wanted to create um, a more Victorian look. So this is a dress that I found at a boutique and it fits like a nightgown. It's very baggy. I was also wearing jeans under this as well. So um, I decided that I wanted to create a, a little bit more of what a corseted structured look would be. And so I just used the liquify tool to kind of cinch in the waist a little bit and also to poof out the arms just a tad as though there were maybe some sort of shoulder pads there. Now I could have gone really extreme with this to try to fit the aesthetic of the original image, but I decided that um, this was as far as I was going to go with it. So the things that I needed to do here, you can see that there's some erasing that I've done and um, that was because I had been going through and masking the body out but then what I needed to do in order to really get in between all of those hairs was just use um, the background erase tool and try to get some of those more fine details. So you can see here that uh, I masked all of my background out. Now what I did, and this is part of my process anytime I'm in the studio, is I also took what I call a background plate. Um, so I'd actually not stamped out this part, but this is trim that had gone all the way across in my studio. And I had just dragged, so the image was probably like this, right? And by hitting um, the transform command, I just dragged the image like this and was able to create kind of a blank background. If I had been um, doing this maybe a little bit more um, thoughtfully, I would have taken out my, my stool here. But anyway, what I really liked about this was the light hitting the wall behind me and I wanted to, um, I was thinking that I wanted to incorporate it into the final, um, in the final piece you really don't see much of it but uh, I thought that it was something that was going to play a more crucial role in the piece, so that's why I decided to keep it in there, and I stamped out most of the trim, but I didn't stamp out the pieces here because the body was going to block it out. So now I have just the body that has been completely cut out from the original background, and I have my new background. So the next thing that I started to do was I started to bring in arms. Um, <laughs> there were a number of arms that I photographed from both myself and my friend Benny, who had joined me in the studio that day. And what I did was I just took all of these images of arms, used the lasso tool to copy them, and then paste them into this new image. And I just started masking out um, what I didn't need, and then placing the arms everywhere that I did need them. Um, so you can see that when I was uh, originally kind of bringing them in here, I uh, I have faces and pieces of um, 
pieces of clothing and you can see there's actually clouds on these and that was a mistake of mine. So one thing that's really important when you're doing composites is to make sure that you're painting on your mask layer as opposed to your actual layer. And I think that by the time I got here, uh, I was painting on the actual images instead of my masks. So that's why we've got these, these uh, clouds. I was using a, a cloud brush to try to get this sense that everything was sort of fading into uh, sort of darkness. So that's in, in some places you're seeing the cloud uh, brush being used on the mask and some places it's mistakenly on the arm. So if I was uh, a little bit more aware when I was doing this, I probably should have done everything on the mask, but it being what it was, uh, that's what we've got. So um, I also did some masking. Uh, I grouped everything together and then I started masking on the, uh, the group itself to try to get just some other areas that I felt were not um, really essential to the, the overall composition of the hands. So a couple of things are going on here. Um, one was that I felt like the arms needed to come from something. When I referred back to the original image that I was using as inspiration, and also some of the other artists that were creating variations on this challenge, um, everybody had a different way of rendering the arms and what they came out of. For me, I kind of envisioned this dark cloud uh, kind of coming up behind the, the, uh, the figure. And so what I did was I used um, some pictures of flower being thrown into the air and I inverted them and then on multiply uh, I have them behind the figure and so this gave me kind of the basis for what I wanted to do and then I started playing with the color of the arms I don't think I ended up using this layer um, I wanted the arms to kind of feel otherworldly and so I think I was just playing with this and I think I ended up leaving it off so, uh, you know, one of those many things where I didn't clean up my layers and probably should have after I saved. And then the next thing that I thought about was that the arms needed to be uh, more dynamic. And so what you can see here is this is a group of um, several different layers over here where I've created uh, some blur and some motion and like zoom and all kinds of stuff. So if we kind of deconstruct this, it's uh, the same layer with a different effect on it over and over again. Um, and it's just like different blending modes. Actually, I think these are all normal blending modes, but let me kind of talk you through what I did. So the first thing that I did is I ran a Gaussian blur on a duplicate of all of these arms down here. And then with my mask, I started painting out the actual hand because what I wanted to do originally was to create this sense of the hands reaching out into the focal plane of the main body um, and then kind of fading back into the distance. And so this was what I got from that. Um, so if I turn off the blur, you can see everything's in focus. And then when I turn the blur on, everything sort of gets blurry a little bit away from the hands. To me, this didn't quite do enough. So I decided I was gonna throw a little more dust into everything with a brush. And it helped to create a little bit of obscuring of the hands, but again, it still wasn't enough to me. So then this next layer is, I think, more flower, uh, pictures of flower. Still not enough. And so then what I did was I took that flower layer and the background, merged it together, and then layered it on top with low opacity to try to create this sense of separation uh, for a couple of reasons. One being that this just felt like the arms were just too much in her space and too real. So I, by obscuring them, um, it kind of helped a little bit. And it looks too, like, let me pull up everything. Oh, so another thing that I did was I ran a zoom on this. So what that is, is if you go into filter and then uh, I think it's radial blur here, you see how there's spin and zoom. So these were the two things that I was running on these arms. So the zoom, um, what it does is depending on the amount that you put in here, it creates this sense of um, 
like moving into space a little bit. So if I run this on here, you'll kind of get a little bit more of a sense of what it does. So I ran kind of an extreme version of this and then I faded it once. So you can see that this is kind of creating this motion blur of everything kind of coming into a central focal point. And then what I did was I just faded that till it, it looked like, you know, I could see the hands, but then also get that sense of the, the motion. So let me undo that. And then the next thing that I did was I think on the same layer, uh, I ran the same radial blur, but I did spin instead. And then I faded that as well. And so to me, that gave the sense of um, not only things moving through space, but also having like this chaotic energy to it too. So let's fade that out and you can see. So do you see how it's kind of given like this circular motion to things here? Um, and so what I did was then I just added various arms throughout. So basically like copying and pasting that same layer um, and then throwing it on low opacity in certain cases and, and blurring stuff out. So that's how we got to this point right here. I have a color balance layer here. It looks like I'm just trying to kind of play with my color. Um, but notice everything is happening on layers below the body and then above this background light layer. So the next thing that I did was uh, I started to try to play with the figure itself. So, um, whoops. Turn that off. I got all my clipping layers clipped to the wrong place. So let me fix that really quickly for us. I brought in a new layer of the body to show you the, uh, the liquify and it unclipped everything that I had done here. So if you've never used clipping masks before, um, it, they're really, really helpful because what they do is they make sure that the adjustment is only applying to the layer that they're clipped to. So these levels here, I darkened the image and it's only applying to the body here. You can see it's not affecting the background. And if we were to release the clipping mask, it would, it would apply to everything. Um, and then I decided that I wanted to make this dress red because um, I really, I hate the color of this dress for one thing. Um, it looks way too much like a weird nightgown. And to me, um, the fact that it's this light nude color means that it's going to draw the eye way too much because the eye focuses on the lightest thing in a composition. And you can see that it's actually lighter than my skin here. So I uh, used a curves layer and I masked out everything in the arms and the face in order to get this darker color. Um, and so it's sort of like in the shadows, it's a black and in the in the highlights, it's sort of this funky auburn -y color. But what I really wanted to do was a red. And so I created a fill layer with a color red that I like. And it is totally messed up. So what did I do here? I think what I had done was um, one of these was on multiply and the other one of these, you know what I did is I cleared my layer style. So let me step back here and fix this. Reclip. When we clear layer styles, what it means is that it clears the opacity and it clears the blending mode. So this is where we were. This blending mode was color and then it was on 100% and um, it's fine. I liked it. It's just applying the red color to the uh, place that it's clipped to but I really wanted a richer red and so I duplicated this layer and threw it on multiply and you can see that what it does is it just creates a richness in those highlights that I really like but I have it on 29% because if I pulled it all the way to 100% it changes the um, the texture of it in some ways. So like to me, this looks more like a velvet now because velvet tends to absorb light and I wanted to have it reflect light a little bit more. So I think we were in the 29% range. I probably could have gone up even more, but I'm also losing a lot of um, my shadow detail too. So I kept it in the lower range. Next, what I did was I had another hand here that I wanted to have kind of um, reaching over the shoulder. 
And um, I'm still kind of a little bit torn as to how effective this part of the composition is. And I think that if I went back and kind of pulled things apart, I might be able to do it better. But at the same time, I'm also happy to leave it for now. So I have this hand reaching over. And um, what I did was I duplicated the hand and, and sort of gave it this sort of funky um, transformed look. And then using a sand brush, I started to kind of disperse the ends. And then I did it a little bit more ex in an extreme way on another layer here. Now, the next thing that I did was I decided to run a sandstorm action. And this is an action that I purchased. I will share the link with you in uh, the, the, the notes because um, it's, you know, it's one of those things that you can do manually. And I spent a lot of time going through a tutorial to try to do it. And it's really hard hard to do. So I decided that um, I wanted to spend the money on an action that I could run. And so what I did was I ran the sandstorm action a couple of times um, to disperse things on both the right and the left side. And to me, what this did was it kind of added to the chaos of the image. Um, it, there's a couple of things that I feel like I wish I had done better with it um, in that you can see that the hands get obscured over here and so what I had done um, on some of the layers is painted out the sandstorm and I probably could have even done a better job with it in certain places like here we really lose the hands um, so this could have been a more effective way of playing with it but that's uh, not what I did. And so here I've got like the hair kind of dispersing, the hand dispersing, and then the dress sort of dispersing, and then this sort of um, kind of interesting cloud sort of circling around her. And the next what I did was um, I ran some color grading on the image. And I got it to uh, a point where everything was kind of interestingly desaturated except for, whoops, Sorry, let me turn my phone off. Everything was interestingly desaturated except for the, uh, the reds, which is a, a look that I really love. And then I created a dodge and burn layer to just darken uh, a lot of things around the image because I really wanted to give it like this hostile look. Um, and I love like the contrast in the face here. It almost reminds me of that scene in Sleeping Beauty where um, Aurora is sort of mesmerized and about to prick her finger on the spindle wheel. Um, so then the next thing that I did was I added um, just some, some mist. And so the way that you do that is on a new layer, you would fill your layer. It doesn't really matter the color that you fill it with, but then you just filter and then you render difference clouds and then you can throw it on on soft light and as you can see i've got this on a lighten mode down here that's why this is darkening this so much um but you can choose whichever one you want so you know on on soft light it creates this wonderful kind of dark effect and then um, when I used screen on a very low opacity, what it did is it sort of created this sense of like smoke. Um, and so, you know, you could play with different difference clouds and see what works best for your image. And so then I layered in just a little bit of grunge to kind of add to that smokiness. So this is um, a concrete that I had photographed and it's got um, some lovely lines in it from when people were kind of smoothing the concrete out. So I just layered that in. I threw in some color balance. And then what I had done is I ran this through alien skin. Um, and I also, you can see up by the hand, I'm sort of editing a couple of things in here. So I ran this through alien skin and I, uh, I did a couple of different layers in alien skin to get this kind of color rendering and then I just added in another layer of the arms because I wanted to make sure that I got some of those hands kind of coming to the forefront a little bit and then I just did a hue saturation layer 
to basically resaturate everything because when I ran things through Alien Skin, it desaturated my image a lot, and I really wanted to get the sense of the red being very saturated. And so here we are. This is just my stamp all layer here. This is the final image, and that's everything that I did to get from beginning to end. I hope that this was super helpful for you. I hope that it inspired you to try some new things and also maybe give your hand at a draw this in your style, but with photographs. So if you do participate in any challenges like that, please let me know. I'd love to see what you create. And I would love for you to join me in a challenge too. It's been so much fun. So I will see you again in another tutorial. Bye.